crafters. Tonight we're going to be making a theater-like fun fold card using the In The Moments Cling Stamp Set and the Stitch So Sweetly dies. We'll use the hand pen designer series paper for the background paper. Now I'm calling this project theater-like because it has a similar look to the theater fold card, only we're using one piece of Misty Moonlight to make the base card and it's relatively easy to make. Come back next week and I'll show you how to make the theater fold card. Hi, I'm Joan Heberlein and I created this video for Joan's Simple Paper Crafts found right here on YouTube. If you're new here, I want to thank you for stopping by. And if you're a returning guest, welcome back. Be sure to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below. That way you won't miss when I post a video, which is typically once a week. Now give me a few seconds and I'll turn the camera down so we can get started. So here's that theater-like note card that we're going to make tonight. And we use the In The Moment Cling Stamp Set. And then we also use the Stitch So Sweetly dies. And we use the second smallest one to cut out the die background for the belly band. Let me show you how it works. So you just open it up. And then it sits like that. First we'll stamp this piece of card stock. It's three and a quarter by four inch. And we'll use the Memento ink. Got tuxedo black here. And I am going to stamp it, turning the stamp upside down and stamping it this way. That way I can see when I've got it completely covered. You don't want to be done there. There we go. And then I'm just going to center this over the bottom portion of the card. Okay. Then we're going to take our stamp set. You're always so good to others. Be good to yourself too. And I'm just going to do the same thing here. That way I can tell when it's... And that's good there. And we're going to make that to the upper right hand portion of the card. And then the last thing we want to do, I'm going to set this aside to dry. We're going to stamp the relax. And I've already got this cut out. So in order to get just the relax portion, I'm going to tape it off. So we've got this post-it tape. And I am just going to go as close as I can to the stamp image that I want to use. And so now I'm just going to stamp the relax. And then to get just the relax portion going, I'm going to take the tape off. And let me see if I can bring this down here a little closer to me. There we go. And I'm going to just cover up our ink and then I'm going to stamp off. And I should have had our paper down to protect our stamp surface, but I didn't have it down. And I've got things falling all over the place here. Then next we'll take our stamp and scrub and I'm going to put some spray on here because we don't want to put our stamps away with any ink on there. And I stamped off first to get the majority of the ink off from there. That keeps the stamp and scrub a little cleaner. Then I don't have to take it to the sink and wash it as often. And those are all done now. And I am going to put that away. So well, let's just get this taken care of. We'll glue our relax to the top portion of the belly band. And I'm just going to put a little glue on the back here. And I'll have the cutting dimensions in the comment section below. You don't have to worry about writing them down. Um, I believe this was 2 and 13 sixteenths by 7 eighths. We'll verify that in a few minutes. So next we're going to grab our cardstock and that is Misty Moonlight. And I have it already cut at ten and a half inches long by four and a quarter. So we want to turn it on the short side. Set our paper into the trimmer at a half an inch. 
and I'm going to use the markings that are on the right hand side of the track. We have markings on both sides, but I'm going to use the one that's on the right hand side. That's going to be, make it a little bit easier for me. And I've got it set at half inch and then I'm going to take it at one and three quarter inches. So I've got the blade down here at one and three quarters. And that's my scoring blade, so I'm going to scoot that back up there because I want the trimmer blade. So I've got that at one and three quarters, and I'm going to set it down, and then I'm going to cut it up to three and a half inches. And I'm stopping here because I can see the, the measurements on this side, so that's three and a half inches there. And now I need to lift the blade up. And I'm going to bring it all the way down to the seven inch mark and I'm going to set it back down. Now you're probably not going to be able to catch this one. I'm going to try and move it up a little bit higher but I don't have a lot of room here. So we're at the seven inch mark and I am going to take it down as far as the eight and three quarters. And there I've got that taken care of. And I'm going to bring it back where we were and I'm going to flip the paper over and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we're at the half inch mark. We're taking the trimmer all the way up to the one and three quarters inch and then we're going to go down to the three and a half inches. And we're stopping at three and a half inches, picking the blade up, dropping it back down at the seven inch mark and going down as far as eight and three quarters. Then we'll bring the blade back up. I did cut through all the way on all four sides. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to cut the half inch piece. So I'm going to turn it on this side. The long edge is at the top. I'm going to use the markers that are on the left hand side. So then I'm going to take it at one and three quarters inch and that I'm going to leave in place. So at that spot I am going to use the scoring blade and I'm bringing it down a half an inch and I'm just scoring upward. And I'm not pushing down right now so I'm bringing it down to the half inch at the bottom so it's like three and three quarters inches and I'm putting pressure down on it and scoring downward. Okay, so we've got those taken care of. Now I need to shift the whole thing over to three and a half inches. I have it at the three and a half inches. And now what we want to do is we want to score it again at the top part and the bottom part. So we're going to take it to the half inch and score upward. And then we'll go down toward the bottom, three and three quarter inches. And score down for a half an inch. But then we also want to trim it in between the two score lines. So I am going to take it at that three and three quarter inches. And I'm not actually using that. I'm, I'm looking where the blade is. I can see it cut right through there. So I've got that lined up there. And I'm going to take it up to where it's cut up here. So that takes care of that half of the card. I need to move this over to the seven inch mark. And let me take my trimmer and expand it, which is great. I can just use the same trimmer. So I want to score it at the top half inch mark. And I've got it at the seven inch mark. Let me just look once again. Yes, it's at the seven inch mark. And I'm taking it at the half inch mark and I'm scoring upward. Then I'm going to go down to the three and three quarters inch and I'm going to score downward. Then I'm going to move that scoring blade back up to the top and I'm going to take my trimmer. I'm going to put it inside. Got it at the half inch mark meeting this line right here. And then I'm going to go down to three and three quarters. And that's taken care of. And the last one is the eight and three quarters. So I'm just scooting this out another eight and a half inches. And I'm going to score the top portion. And I just need to make sure it's on the right mark. And I'm going to score it upward. And bring it down and score the bottom portion. Okay, now let's see how we did. I may have to do a little trimming here. Sometimes you have to just clean it up with your snips, but it looks pretty good. Those are, those are all good. 
and I ha these are not connected here so let me and it broke loose so I'm going to just clean this up here there's a little bit of fuzz on there and I'm just taking my fingernail file and just breaking that off so next we want to fold these outward so you're making a mountain fold there then we want to fold inward the next fold and I'm going to score these now that we've got that laying flat and I'm going to reach in and score the inward ones and we can do it from the back side as well okay then we'll do it same thing to the other side score outward and then inward so there we have our card base set up next we want to take is our designer series paper so I've got two pieces cut at one and a half by four inches and then two pieces cut at one and a half by three inches and I'm thinking that I'm going to flip this around I think this one had fell, fallen on the floor and it turned upside down so I had it wrong we'd have been putting the flowers on there upside down probably wouldn't have noticed but so that's how we want to have those pieces on there and then when we're done with this this should go in the center that's going to work fine there so I'm going to just go ahead and glue these pieces down we'll use our silicone mat that keeps our work surface clean um, the glue doesn't stick to this nor will our stamp and seal or seal plus you just need to wait till the glue dries and then you can just peel it right off so i'm going to move this off a little bit and then you want to leave an eighth of an inch border on the the card And I am going to wipe this up here because I am, don't want to have to wait for that glue to dry because I need to continue on. So our next piece is this one here and I have the flowers going in the right direction so I can go ahead and glue that down. And we'll leave this have an eighth of an inch border as well. And I'm just going to take my bone folder against both of those and make sure there isn't any glue bubbles underneath. And we'll do this one. And so then we're ready for this piece. So let's go ahead and, and color this in. I'm going to work with Stampin' Blends. We're going to use the light colors first so that it won't smear into the other colors when we do the dark ones. I am going to do her skin first. I believe that's our lightest color here. And I am going to speed this up. And we use the Natural Tone 1000 for the skin color. And next we'll do our shirt. And that's going to be done with the Dark Bermuda Bay and the Light Bermuda Bay. And I'm going to use the Nub Point. And I'm just going to trace over the markings that they have there. Those are good markings to use as guides to put dark markings on the, the paper. And now I have the light Bermuda Bay, and I am going to use the broad tip. And I'm going to go back with the dark Bermuda Bay, because it needs a little more shading. And then the next thing we'll do is we're going to do her pillows because those are also done in the dark Bermuda Bay. And 
And I'm just using the bull nose tip. And I'm going to let that dry and we're going to come back and we'll do some more dark areas on that to make it a darker shade once it's dry. So what we'll do next is our jeans with the dark misty moonlight. And then we're going to use a light misty moonlight on the jeans. And I'm going to use the broad tip. Well, I want her jeans to look faded, so I'm going to use the light balmy blue to fade them. And I'm using the broad tip on this. And let's do some more dark Bermuda Bay on those pillows to get some shading in there. And then we have our, our Natural Tones 100, and that I'm going to use to put some highlights in her hair. And I'm just going over the, the streaks that are in her hair now. And then we're going to use the Natural Tone 400 to color the rest of her hair. And I'll use the wide, broad tip. And then I'm going to use our light balmy blue to put some coloring in the window panes. And then we'll come in with our, I'm going to use the broad tip on this. And then we're going to use our color lifter to lift that out of there. And then you'll just get a hint of window pane in there. So I'm just going to take the color lifter and just go over those strokes. And I probably shouldn't be doing this right now because I haven't done the browns for the window frame. So I'll have to let this dry a little bit before we come back with the window pane. And I just want to check the tip is clear, so if it wasn't clear, I would use it on some paper and clean that up. I don't have my grid paper here. Okay, so we can go ahead and do the wood grain in the lower section. So I am going to just color it in down here. And this is the lighter shade for the wood grain that I'm using. And then I'm going to just change and use a bull nose tip to do these spleens. I don't know what they're called, but that's what I'm calling them. We haven't done the cup yet, so we'll do the cup in the dark Bermuda Bay. And then I'm going to take our 400 natural tone and put some grain into our wood. And I'm going to use a bull nose tip. And I'm going to put a little shadowing underneath where the pillows and the feet are meeting each other. And where her butt touches the bench. And then we're going to come back with our Natural Tone 500 and just try to blend that out. I'm going to use the broad nose tip. I can see a little bit of blue up here, so I am going to just touch that up. One down here, too. I should leave it alone, otherwise I'm going to end up messing things up again, right? And we just need to glue that on the center of that. And we'll use our mat so we don't get glue on our surface here. And we're going to leave 
leave an eighth of an inch at the top on the two sides. And then let's get our bone folder out to make sure we got all the glue bubbles out. A little fuzzy there let's pull that off so we have our card that worked really well and let's get our belly band made for this so let's put it back together i'm just going to wrap this around here we'll do this one one side first and then we'll get the second side in And I'm just going to press it down gently so you don't want it to be so tight that you can't get it on or off. And then I'm just using glue dots. And we'll put a glue dot on the end. And this is that set, I think, that is backwards. So hopefully I can get it on there. And then put the glue dot there. And then we're just going to set it down gently. Don't want to squeeze all the air out of it. I want it to, to be loose. Then we will put glue on the center of this. And this I'm going to take it off just in case I miss and I don't want to glue the card shut. So I'm just going to put a little glue here. And then we'll put this right on the top of that. And then we can bring both cards in. We'll leave one open and one closed. I hope you like this project as much as I did. As you can see, it would work great with just about any sentiment stamp set. Why don't you give it a try? Now, if you enjoyed today's video, would you do me two favors? Click the thumbs up emoji. That means you like it. And would you share it on social media with your crafting friends and pin it to Pinterest? These actions will help me to keep sharing my ideas with other crafters for free. And I'd really appreciate that. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss any future videos. If you have any questions, be sure to contact me. I'm here to help in any way that I can. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Just reach out to me. If you'd like to place a Stampin' Up! order or would like a catalog, hop over to my website where you'll find the Shop Now button. To shop with me, you'll need to go to joanheberline.stampinup.net. Bear with me a little bit longer because I want to let you know of the promotions going on right now. The All Together collection includes early release products from the 2022 to 2023 annual catalog. It's an exciting new range of natural stamp and blends and exclusive products that you can't get anywhere else. The All Together collection includes the Here Together bundle, which is the Here Together stamp set in the Here For You dies. It also includes the Natural Tone Stampin' Blends collection, which is 10 individual Stampin' Blends, all in natural tones. It also includes the altogether six by six inch designer series paper. Create projects inspired by you with the altogether designer series paper. This black and white paper features bold graphic designs that will complement any project. The following exclusive products are only available while supplies last. The Here For You dies, the Here Together bundle, and the All Together collection. This promotion ends May 2nd, 2022. Discover the depths of the ocean and your artistic abilities with the Waves of the Ocean collection. This coastal collection includes an inspiring set of stamps and detailed dies both early release products from the upcoming 2022-2023 annual catalog. 
plus a pack of paper made from the images of hand-poured paint, blue-hued foil sheets for a sea of shine, and radiant rhinestones for a splash of sparkle. Each an exclusive product you can only purchase during the promotion period. Promotion ends May 2nd, 2022. Meet your mini crafting companion, the mini Stampin' Up! Cut and Emboss Machine. This mini but mighty machine is durable, portable, and easy to use. It's the perfect pick if you're a budding beginner who wants to branch out, a paper crafting pro who wants to craft on the go, or someone who's short on storage space. Make precise cuts and emboss designs for any paper project. Originally $60, it can be yours for only $48 between March 1st to the 31st. The Mini Cut and Emboss Machine is a compatible with a large selection of Stampin' Up! embossing folders and dies. Kickstart your collection and combine your Mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine with any or all of the following stamp and die bundles. They're also 20% off during the month of March. Mark your calendars. I'll be back next Saturday, March 19th at 7 p.m. Central Time. We'll be making the Theater Fold card. Not to be confused with the Theater Light card that we made tonight. I hope you'll be here to join me. Thanks so much for being here with me tonight, and I look forward to next time. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe.